happened to my people up there in villages? I have no education, no property, absolute poverty. So he said, I'm going to work for my people. I'm going to do everything possibly he can do to see I can get my people up. So he went back to Bombay. He was able to get uh, a job as a lawyer. Bombay being a big city with a lot of in British influence, he was able to uh, go to college and he was teaching in uh, college. Then he started writing about the untouchable peoples and he started doing a lot of research as to find out what the caste system is. Why? Where? How the Hindu religion? And he was writing to the British. And British people, thank goodness, at least listened to him. Listened to him. So when the time came, in 1930s they were talking about the British leaving India. There's a lot of commotion going on. And I want to bring my favorite person into the discussion is Gandhi here. I'm referring to Mr. Gandhi, uh, the old man that you would have seen a picture. The movie, the famous movie they wrote, they took, okay, that is a propaganda picture. Okay. This guy was also Bharatla. I think he was a third rate Bharat, uh, uh, Bharatla, he couldn't even find a job in India, so they shipped him to South Africa. That's the truth. So he went to South Africa to work for one of his... Uh, uh, see, the, the, when, when the Indians went to other countries, uh, whether they're, they're uh, Caribbeans or, or South Africa or, or Fiji and other places, the first shipload was all the untouchables. Because they needed the uh, laborers or the coolies they used to call at that time. Coolie, coolie. As anybody from uh, Trinidad or, or Jamaica would understand the word. Yeah, coolie. And that was the untouchables. But then to manage them, they took the upper caste. So they had uh, uh, pretty much the entire cross-section of people moved to different countries. But the majority of the people, because the mo they, they need more laborers than, ever, than the masters. So majority of Indians were shipped to those countries where the dull untouchables. Okay. So, but the Gandhi went there and he, was, he, he saw the British man treating all Indians or his upper caste man as bad as blacks. He got, he got worried. I said, we are the pure race, we are the Aryan race. How can the British can treat us like the blacks? So he started uh, uh, fighting uh, as, as, as misunderstood. People say he fight racism. But they forgot to tell you what racism he was fighting for. <laughs> he was not fighting for the black man. He was fighting for his own race. So he became a little famous. And whenever you fight for your, your race, the, the rest of the clowns lift him up, put him on pedestal. So he became a, a great, great hero. And the movie they showed you that the, he was thrown out of the uh, tr train compartment. And everybody say, hey, here is the man fighting for the racism. He was fighting because he was being treated like the blacks. That was the reason he was fighting. He was, he was fighting. Anyway, ultimately he came back to India and he became overnight a hero. Because they, they, they wanted somebody, a hero. They were waiting for a hero. And here came a big hero from South Africa because he was fighting against the British. So he, who, Gandhi was representing the upper caste. But he declared that he was representing quote unquote Hindus, which conveniently included the untouchables. Because for them, untouchables are part of Hindus, except as slaves. But Dr. Ambedkar asked, if we are Hindus, how come we don't have the same right as you have? For that he says, well that is the Varna system and Karma. So Dr. Ambedkar said, no. If we are 
socially separated we have to be politically separated so when the british started talking about independence and uh, the parliamentary elections and all that as dr ambedkar said this person the great person uh, as matter of fact uh, brother renok rashidi defines dr ambedkar as someone that if you put malcolm x garvey bukati uh, frederick martin luther king all together roll them up and you have dr ambedkar unfortunately the untouchable community has that only one person we call him the savior the emancipator okay so he said we need our own independence we want our own representation we want to elect our own people but gandhi said no you are hindus so we will elect you but british said to turn around to gandhi i said you say in the meantime he was talking about oh i want to elevate everybody i want to eradicate untouchability but he didn't want to eradicate the caste system he was firm believer in caste system but the world did not know that you can eradicate untouchability without eradicating caste system because they are one and the same the reason why he he doesn't want to, he did not want the caste system to be eradicated because the minute caste system eradicated the hindu religion disappears for him the religion is more important because that is their race so he was in fact cheating the people saying that he wants to eradicate untouchability so the british prime minister at that time wrote him back i said you say you want to help these people and this is one way to help these people to have their own representation he said so they went to england london for a round table conference there was a discussion said so dr ambedkar a thousand times more intelligent more smart compared to gandhi so there's no way he could dis he can he can argue so he sat there silently in the round table conference so the british thought gandhi agreed they even declared that the untouchables will have their own representation this guy came back he said i will i will not eat till i die if government the british is going to uh, uh, separate the untouchables from the hindus gandhi was a hero he was a god to the hindus so this guy went on fast not eating 3 days 4 days 5 days this is getting tense in india and dr ambedkar got a lot of threat that if something happens to gandhi you are gone your people will be gone and there is no doubt about it weak people so easy so he was worried but still he said i'm not going to let my people down i'm going to try my best to protect my people but ultimately there was there was a point that he had to give up give in rather so he got a compromise and that is the reason dr ambedkar called gandhi as number one enemy of the untouchables because today without that particular action of gandhi the untouchables life would have been far far better because we would have had our own representation today according to the compromise they said okay they designate a certain constituencies for the untouchables cuz this district will be represented by untouchable but would be elected by everybody and the untouchables are never majority in any district also in indian uh, 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 process election process that you have to be nominated by your party it is not like here you got to be nominated by your own party to be uh, to contest an election and all these parties are controlled by the upper caste so people like me will never have chance to be nominated so they'll pick all these uh, dummies and only those dummies are sitting there and they would not open their mouth 
They probably don't know how to open their mouth. Because that kind of people, they elect them. And that is...